Hey friends, welcome back to your Thursday edition of Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your life. We've got AMD news to talk about today, some Nvidia stuff because obviously today was the launch of the RTX 3090. I don't know if I was able to pick up a card because I'm filming this before they've actually come out. So hopefully I did. I'm going to be live streaming it over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. So maybe come watch me do that. Although by the time you watch this, it's already going to be too late, but we'll do other things over on our Twitch channel. Anyways, we're going to do other things here, which is talk about today's video sponsor, which is Ting, which is the mobile phone carrier that does things differently because you only pay for what you use. If you're on Wi-Fi all the time like I am or the UFD team is, then you don't need a ton of data. And with Ting, everything's customized to you. You don't have to sign up for any bundles. They actually just bill you for what exactly you use. And before you even switch to them, you can use the rate calculator to find out whether or not you're going to save money with them. In fact, the UFD team is on Ting while they're here in the States. And our phone bill for this past month was, was slightly higher than average. I mean, averaging about $25 a month. We paid $36 a month month for two people, which isn't that bad. $18 a month. You can't beat that anywhere. Anyways, they have all of the coverage that you could want. They've got the Sprint and T-Mobile's networks, which are the same thing now, as well as adding Verizon in, and they care about customer service. When you call them, a real person's going to answer you and talk to you about everything that's going on because they care about you, and they care about you so much that if you use the link in the video description, ufd.ting.com, you can save money off of your first phone bill with them. Big thanks to Ting for sponsoring this video. Big thanks that I love using them, and so we have them for the, the UFD team, so you can check them out as well, ufd.ting.com. Now let's go ahead and and talk about AMD and the card that I think you should be most excited for general consumer out there. A lot of hype is built around the six to $700 flagship cards that are coming out from the respective parties, big Navi versus RTX 3080. But I think the sweet spot, especially in previous generations was that 200 to $250 mark in the RX 580 slash RX 5500 XT, but not really because they kind of sold them alongside each other. But we now have information surrounding Navy Flounder, which is supposed to be the replacement for the 5500 XT and hopefully hopefully the death knell for the freaking 580. Navy Flounder is supposed to feature 40 compute units, 192-bit memory bus width, as well as 2,560 shader cores, which could potentially allow in the sub $250 market some really competitive gaming experiences for next-gen games. We're not actually going to have to use a 580 to get 1080-60 at, at low settings. You could upgrade to Navy Flounder, and you might potentially be able to get much better details at that same 1080p mark for the $250 price point. I'm excited mostly for Navy Flounder because I think this is going to be the card that a lot of people are going to go for. And I think it's AMD's key advantage going into this holiday season. It's not the raw knockout between the 3080 and Big Navi. Although I am excited for that, I do think it's going to be based on a value comparison. Big Navi is going to be cheaper than the 3080 and give us a good reason to buy it. But I think AMD might hopefully be first in the market with a lower end card, which is exactly what we want to see. So good job, AMD. I'd love to see that. But we also have some information regarding AMD Rembrandt, which is supposed to be the next next generation of AMD's APUs. If you haven't checked out the video over on our second channel, Brainus, where I reviewed the Ryzen 7 4750G, which is Zen 2 CPU plus Vega graphics. Well, Rembrandt's going to be the great grandson of that with us getting some details of the fact that it's going to be based on Zen 3 CPU. It's going to have DDR5 5200 support, 20 PCI Express 4.0 lanes on the AM5 socket with two USB 4 ports. This is great because I'm super excited for it. It's going to be apparently the first APU that's going to move us off of Vega because the replacement for Renoir is going to be Cezanne, which is Zen 3 CPU, which is an improvement, but still only Vega graphics. Rembrandt's finally going to bring us to that Navi 2 RDNA 2 architecture, which we want to see on the six nanometer process. That's apparently the roadmap that's going on for AMD right now, but that's not just it. Okay, while well, we're excited for Zen 3 APUs, AMD is not content to let regular Zen die with them announcing the Ryzen 3000 C series processors based on Zen and Zen Plus. These are going to be going into Chromebooks, the Ryzen 7 3700C, four cores, eight threads, four gigahertz Zen Plus architecture, the Ryzen 3 3250C, two cores, four threads on the regular Zen architecture. They're claiming that it's going to be anywhere from 100 to 251% faster performance than the previous generation AMD Chromebooks. And now we just just have to wait for them to integrate Zen 2 into it. And then one little more update on next next gen stuff. The Ryzen 7 5700U has been materialized in a new benchmark for ashes of the singularity. The performance doesn't really matter because it's probably still an early iteration. Since the new Renoir U series mobile processors came out very recently, this is something that we're likely going to see launched next year. So early performance right now doesn't matter. Just know that it's actually showing up in benchmark. So it does seem like AMD is actively developing that and we could potentially see it at our hands in laptops next year. 
Now let's talk about the RTX 3090. I don't know whether or not I got my hands on one. You may have tried. I want to hear what you guys think. But NVIDIA, as of today, when I'm filming it, has announced that the RTX 3090 is going to be between 10 to 15% faster in gaming performance than the RTX 3080. They're calling it their BF GPU or Big Ferocious GPU. I'm pretty sure that's not what the F stands for, but they're showing benchmarks, especially in a workload scenarios for professionals. That's really where the 3090 comes in. It's more of a professional grade card, even though they're kind of trying to pitch it as a Radeon 7 like deal where it is both gaming and compute but really it's for compute with those 24 gigabytes of GDR6 VRAM they're also saying that's going to be in limited stock and they want to apologize up front in case you weren't able to pick one up today and that they're going to be working with their partners to get more out sometime soon but let's switch gears to the 3080 because Der Bauer is able to get his hands on an RTX 3080 Strix he was able to deconstruct it and show off everything that's going on there. So we'll leave a link in the video description for you to check that out with him. But Asus themselves saying that we should expect the Strix to launch sometime next week, the week of September 28th. And I'm looking forward to this next launch, which is apparently Xiaomi is going to be getting into the cheap high refresh rate monitor game with them expected to launch a 240 hertz 1080p gaming monitor starting at $145. This is one of Xiaomi's previous monitors. So if it looks anything like that, comes in at $145, do does 240 hertz. I'm heckin' excited to see what that could potentially be with obviously a cheap 360 hertz as well. I'm very intrigued on that. And I'm also intrigued on the new No Man's Sky update to bring it to 3.0. This is called Origins, and it's going to be another massive update beyond what they've already done. Obviously, No Man's Sky had a sordid history when it first launched. Not a whole lot was delivered on that they actually promised, but they've made a lot of updates over the years, and they've implemented a bunch of new stuff, such as procedurally generated worlds with more dramatic awe-inspiring scenery, as well as a wide color palette. They're going to have new weather systems to make all of that better, as well as never-before-seen vegetation, but most importantly, gigantic gigantic sandworms yes my friends sandworms and no man's sky 3.0 update that's exactly what you want to see in your life but while no man's sky continues to give free content with all of the new updates that they're doing sony deciding that hey you want that spider-man remaster on ps5 well you're gonna have to pay for that that's not gonna come free sony finally saying that there's not gonna be a smart delivery system where you could get upgraded to the next gen for free obviously this is a first party sony title this does not apply to all PlayStation games that are coming out, CD Projekt Red already committing that Cyberpunk is going to get a free upgrade to the next gen. So you don't have to necessarily worry for every game, but Sony confirming Spider-Man not going to happen. And let's talk about the other team that's playing in this game, Microsoft, because they said that they are not finished acquiring game studios. The CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, saying that it takes a while. So they're just going to continue snapping things up. The latest rumor that I've heard with regards to Microsoft purchasing another game studio might indeed be Sega, which would produce a lot of sadness in me since one of my most beloved franchises for the PS4 is Persona, which is made by Atlas, who is a subsidiary of Sega. So that could potentially mean that Persona is now an Xbox exclusive, which I guess I just have to get an Xbox. Come on, get this figured out already. Microsoft also announcing what they're calling Project HSD, which is holographic storage for the cloud. Using lasers essentially to etch in data on a volume, which you can then shift the laser to actually etch more data into the same volume so that you don't necessarily need to use all that much space to have a ton of data and you can just use a reference beam and change the angle and it's all great. And then you just use the reference beam to read the data. It's potentially something that could come out sometime later. It's obviously not being implemented right now, but Microsoft is looking into it. But something that is being implemented right now is Spotify polls, which they're bringing out to the app for their podcasts, which I get would make podcasts more interactive, but completely goes against how I listen to podcasts, which is typically when I'm doing something else, when I'm not actively at a device. I listen to my podcast when I run, so I'm not going to take out my phone to vote in a poll. That's just simply not going to happen. So I'm curious to see how popular this becomes. Spotify is only testing this on a few podcasts right now. It just seems like a weird thing to do for a medium that's supposed to be passively consumed. Speaking of passively consumed, you need to actively consume the Samsung Galaxy FE or or fan edition, apparently that's what they want to call it. It's essentially the Samsung Galaxy S20 and mixture of the S20 Plus, but for the $699 price point, it has a Snapdragon 865, six gigs of RAM, 6.5 inch AMOLED screen at 120 hertz, only full HD though, but with 128 gigs of storage, as well as a micro SD card that you can put in it and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. Then it also has all of the same cameras that you would expect on the S20, and it comes in all of the variety of colors that you see here for that $699 price point. 
This is probably what Samsung should have led with. I think I find this a lot more appetizing than their $1,000 flagships, but I'm not a massive smartphone manufacturer, so I don't know what the best marketing strategy is when it comes to this stuff. And I know that I wasn't marketed enough about Triumph because I found out that they used to make bicycles, and now they're, they're actually partnering with a bicycle company to make an electric bike, which actually looks quite good. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to find out more about Triumph and their new electric bike. And then let's talk about another electric vehicle company, Tesla, apparently suffering major stock issues, not because of battery day, but because they had a full network outage the day after battery day with electric saying that this is probably one of the worst network outages that they've seen. It was not only the connection to the cars that went down, but apparently Tesla's own internal system went down, which led to difficulties with them being able to service and sales and delivery and all of that. So nothing at Tesla went well yesterday. Big yikes, the stock tank 10%, which, I mean, this is just kind of the future when it comes to smart stuff. If it's connected to the internet, server maintenance and servers going down is going to happen. So we kind of need to find either a way to mitigate it or just a way to get used to it. And you should get used to this episode of Hot News being finished because that's what it is. Don't forget that you could be finished with paying too much for your phone bill using the link in the video description, ufd.ting.com to save money off your first phone bill with Ting, the carrier that does things differently. I love them so much. Check them out and check yourselves out. Well, I, that's my segue to the end every single time. I, I need to fix that. I'm, I'm done with this episode. I'm going to go work on my branding for leaving you guys. Cheers.